Serious. Doctors, have you ever wanted to refuse a patient? What did he or she do? Story 1. One night, I rode my bike home from the hospital. This was in a quiet and small town, and so I lived very close to the hospital. I see a couple on the side of the street, arguing. Then, suddenly, he starts beating her. She screams and runs into the street to stop a car, but the only car coming along won't stop. So it ends up just being me and that couple. I must have been tired after a long shift, plus the environment is so non-threatening, small town, summer evening with still lots of daylight, and I completely misjudge the situation. I stop and offer the girl to accompany her to the ER, only a five minute walk, to get that cut lip taken care of. She hesitates and acts strangely, and I realize she's high the same moment I realize him approaching me. So I'm tall for a woman, but he's a really tall and strong guy. At this point, he's swearing at me, telling me how sad my parents will be after he will have beaten me to death with his bare hands. Last moment before he reaches me, I jump on my bike and race away as fast as I could. At home, I call the police to go look after the girl. Two weeks later, I do the night shift and guess who's brought in swearing and threatening to end everyone's lives? Stupid druggy guy. Apparently, he took too many sleeping pills and told his girlfriend, who called an ambulance. He then threatened to kill the EMTs, who promptly called the police. Then, of course, he threatened to kill the policemen, and they brought him to the ER, where everyone like that eventually ends up. I had been so scared when the first incident happened, and I had a visceral response when I saw him again. I really, really did not want to treat him. But this being a small town hospital, I was the only doctor in the ER, in medicine, and I didn't really have a choice. So I had to examine him. I told the police what had happened before, and they stayed at my side the whole time. I vividly remember having to check his pupils and looking into his hate-filled junkie eyes. Made me want to run away so bad. I ended up committing him for being a threat to himself and others. Psychiatry released him two days later, and he promptly came back to the ER when I wasn't there. Another ER doc committed him again, and psych released him again after 48 hours. It's just how the system worked. Security was crap at this little hospital, and I ended up refusing to do night shifts without better security. As the hospital was very cheap, they found a med student to shadow me. He was six foot something, all muscles, and an avid kickboxer in his free time. Druggy came back once, had an amicable chat with the med student, and as far as I know, never came back. I left the hospital soon afterwards, so yeah, boo for druggy patient, yay for med student who doubles as a kickboxer. Story 2 I'm on the other side of this one. When I was in my 20s back in the 80s, I was working for a really poopy factory. I was unloading a truck and pulled a groin muscle, and at first it didn't seem too bad, and I just ignored it. One day it really flared up and I was kind of scared and hurting. So I went to a local clinic and at admitting, I was asked if it was work related and said yes. And the admitting lady stared at me as if I had two heads. I went in to see the doctor and told him what was wrong. And the jerk said, you can't sue your company. You can go back to work tomorrow. And that was it. No explanation of what was wrong or any attempt at help, all delivered with a dismissive and contemptuous voice. At the time, I was young and dumb and pretty used to being treated like crap at home and at work, so I just left and accepted that as my fate. I've matured a lot since then and don't take that stuff anymore. Story 3 Some patients will obviously be difficult to care for, and there are plenty of other doctors in my area. A patient might call and insist on talking with me before making their initial appointment, then not let me off the phone with multiple questions. I'm generally busy trying to get to the next patient. Worse, they will start to disagree with my over-the-phone answers. This has happened more than once, and I've said to them, I'm sorry, but I can tell you would be better off with another physician. At that point, they always back down and talk about how they've heard how wonderful I am, etc. But I let them know they need to call somebody else. The first time this happened, I'd been in practice only a short time and had lots of openings in my schedule, so I was very hesitant to do it. But I was very glad that I did and realized I had control over my life and my practice. Story 4. I'm a nurse at an allergy and immunology clinic. Since we are not an ER, we have the right to refuse patients. 
Most people are asked to leave simply because they're being jerks to the staff. People can get really angry and abusive about their bills. In my time, I've seen maybe five patients terminated for their inappropriate behavior. More often, the most interesting folks we turn away are not even patients. For a long time, we had a nice homeless man who would come in at least once a week in a tattered, fake UPS uniform and ask if we had any packages. We would always tell him we did not, and he would quietly take a fistful of lollipops from the front desk and leave. We eventually had to tip off the building manager, as patients were complaining, but I think about him every so often. I truly hope that somewhere, someone is providing him with candy. Story 5. I was a manager at a general practice surgery. I've kicked quite a few patients off our list. The majority for abusive, threatening, or racist behavior towards my staff, or attempting to defraud the practice. I did, however, refuse to have a patient attend the practice, insisting that he was only ever seen in his home. He was a convicted pedophile who'd also been done for assault on a girl the same age as two of my receptionists. He defecated and urinated in the clothes he stood up in, had probably not bathed since 1973 was permanently drunk, and on the one time he drove to the surgery, hit every wall, barrier, and car in the car park. Luckily, he was recalled to prison not long after he was assigned to us, and was not alive for long after that, having refused treatments for sepsis. Wretched creature. Story 6. I was a nurse at a walk-in clinic when we had a patient come in for a spider bite. She had a small, swollen spot on her butt, and was probably bitten by some common house spider, definitely not venomous. She wanted the doctor to make it disappear so that she could work that night. She was a stripper and knew that she would make less money with a red swollen bump on her bum, a bump on her rump. The doctor couldn't do anything and the patient got angry and started getting loud. She yelled loud enough for the whole clinic to hear, well just suck it. She wanted the doctor to suck the venom from her butt. We immediately asked her to leave. After a few minutes of arguing, we had to call the police. TLDR, stripper wanted a spider bite on her butt sucked. Story 7. I worked in a GP's surgery for a while, and I know one of them has transferred at least three patients, two guys, one girl, for declaring their love for her. Also, a couple of ridiculously violent people, usually pain pill seekers, get kicked out. Bear in mind, this is in a dodgy area of Belfast, and half the patients are former or current paramilitary members. So violent means violent. Oh, that reminds me, a different doctor in the same surgery had his coat stolen by a patient, and one of the other patients, who was a paramilitary member, who really liked him, made sure he got it back with everything in it, minus money that had already been spent, and told him the thief patient would never bother him again. So I guess he had a patient refused on his behalf. Story 8. Sort of related. My office phone number is very similar to a pain management clinic's. I had the lovely opportunity to answer the phone of a very ticked off patient who was being refused service and could not understand that she called the wrong number. I could only imagine what the poor workers there experienced with this woman. In the five conversations I'd had with her, I was called a lying chunt witch She will find where I live and have her ex-con boyfriend beat the ever-loving poop out of me and other various versions of threats of bodily harm and insults. This went on for a week straight before she realized that I wasn't playing a trick on her, that she actually called the wrong number. Story 9. All the time. I'm on my break on shift right now, and we've already thrown out two tonight. Abusive idiots who don't understand they can't just effing blind and get what they want. Every day we throw patients out here because, at least when I'm in charge, you don't get to walk into my emergency department and shout and be abusive and horrible when there are poorly patients and kids who don't want to hear that. I don't care if you don't want to wait or if you messed up your stupid foot being drunk. It could be busted to heck and back for all I care. If you're shouting and swearing in my face, you can go away. More doctors need this attitude, I feel. Story 10. This is also the other side of the coin, but as a teen in the 90s, I was particularly entrenched in the whole grunge punk look. I had terrible problems with ovarian cysts and had ongoing medical treatment for it. At one point, I was sent for an ultrasound, and the tech performing it started berating me, saying, your pain is obviously from all the scar tissue here from your abortion, and kept making comments of the like. 
I was 16, in pain, and was horrified by what this man was saying to me. I had never had an abortion. I realized later that he had made assumptions because of how I was dressed, and realized just how crappy people can be sometimes. Story 11. Drug seekers, like the rest have said, but there was one that stood out in my memory. A lady who was triaged as green on a particularly busy night. Green is usually non-life-threatening things that can wait a few hours before being seen grew impatient after a few hours of waiting. She stormed into our work area, the door connecting us to the waiting room, and started yelling at everyone why she was still waiting. One of the nurses approached her to calm her down, and I remember hearing her yell this on the way out, You are public servants. Remember the servant part. My shift ended before I had to see her. Story 12. I had a patient come in so drunk she couldn't walk, wanting her crowns delivered. We didn't have them. She was rude, so all we did was re-cement her temporary crowns. I had another who's an alcoholic and somehow lost her new denture that I delivered for another doctor. She called me a year later, upset that she didn't know what she did with them between the time she left the office and got home. I really wanted to ask her if she just called the bar she stopped at to see about the lost and found. I just told her we could make a new one for her if she paid. Story 13. Often. In the ED or hospital, you can't refuse them. Sometimes I give the appropriate care, which is not equal to what they want, that is, narcotics, benzos, tons of tests. In the clinic, we fire a lot of people. Too many no-shows. Fired. Cuss out the front desk and threaten them. Fired. I had a patient come to see me today after being with another doc I know well. He wants more OxyContin. The other doc only gives him 30 a month. He's suffering on that. I told him I would take care of him, but I wouldn't be writing for his chronic narcs. He won't be back. Story 14. I took my daughter to the pediatricians a while back. We were in the examining room, waiting on the doctor's arrival. I received a call from my boss at work and answered because she hadn't arrived. The doctor opened the door, saw me on the phone, and rudely told me she'd return when I decided the appointment was more important than my phone call. If it hadn't been an on-base doctor, a major I think, I would have responded in kind. Instead, I bit my lip. I know I wasn't the doctor, but this one refused me for the time I was on my phone. Dang work calls. Story 15. I once fired a patient for being an incredible pain in the butt. Details escaped me. Years later, after I had moved to a new location, she showed up to make an appointment, not knowing I was there. New staff read her chart, do not ever appoint this person, and froze up with her in the waiting room. They came to ask me what to do, but by the time I had gotten out there, she was already being crazy and said very loudly, I would never come to this place. You are all very rude, and left of her own accord. She basically fired herself the second time. Story 16. Vet here, so clients rather than patients, I wouldn't say that I fire clients often, but it has certainly happened before and will probably happen again. Usually it's with people who refuse to comply because they read something online, people who routinely waste your time talking about internet diagnosis, both huge time drains, just not worth the trouble, and people who refuse to have their pets properly vaccinated, posing a danger to the rest of the patients, and of course people with a history of not paying for treatment. We get drug seekers on occasion, but those are presumably rarer than in human medicine. Story 17. Yes, people who yell at my staff for no reason at all. People who are clearly drug seekers. We had one guy at the VA who had been seen the previous three nights in a row for pain. I pulled his chart. I also pulled his chart from four previous VAs he's been to. All the same. I denied him. He then sent his wife in for back pain. I took one look and told her to leave. He then moved on to the next VA down the interstate. Story 18. Despite being thought of as having to do whatever the doc says, pharmacists have quite a bit of leeway in dispensing. I've had people refuse to leave, even when closing. People scream and swear and use racist comments. People poop on the floor of the bathroom and just plain try to snatch it out of my hand. One went outside, got in his car, came through the drive through and asked if this was bulletproof glass. I had no idea, but promptly answered, yes. Story 19. Psychologist, not being able to afford the $5 copay on the meds you need that keep you from spending $200 or more when the lack of meds puts you in a hospital. 
but you can buy premium gas for your car, expensive food for your cats, constantly hoard arts and crafts stuff at hundreds of dollars a month. Come back and see me when you display the prioritizing necessary to get your life in order. Otherwise, complete waste of time. Story 20. I'm a psychologist, but not a physician. I refuse to treat people all the time. However, by treatment, I really mean assessment, as this is what I do. Along with some counseling in select cases, I refuse to treat adolescent patients that do not agree to therapy. It's a waste of everybody's time. I also refuse to treat or assess if there is even a hint of an upcoming child custody hearing. Hell no. Story 21. Nurse here. Known drug addict patient complaining of headache pain. I offered her Tylenol first and explained that if that didn't work, we would offer her something stronger. She started screaming at the top of her lungs that she needed IV dilaudid. Actually dilaudid, but that is what she said. That pills did not work for her, and the only thing that helped was IV dilaudid. Then she fired me. I was certainly relieved. Story 22. I had a doc discharge and refused me once. I was 16, and he was my neurologist for my epilepsy. I had only seen him a couple of times. My parents, divorced, were fighting over who would pay for my doctor visits, and so I wasn't able to see him as often as I was supposed to. He told me I was irresponsible and I should try harder. Dong. Story 23. I once went to a doctor with my four times broken arm, which was operated on three months earlier. The tightened nails should be removed soon. Me and my mother waited a normal amount of time, but somehow my mom freaked the frick out, made a massive scene, causing the doctor to kick me and her out, refusing any future contact. Well done, mom. Story 24. Yeah, drug seekers who get really mean and nasty and in my face, yelling at me, insulting my intelligence and education, gorked out on who knows what legal pills and illegal substances. Those people ruin my day. I add fuel to the fire by refusing to give them any more narcotics. Story 25. Yep, currently discharging a patient for forging disability paperwork and faking my signature on the form. DHS, Department of Human Services, hilariously contacted my office, requesting that I sign it myself rather than having the patient do it for me, as if she had my consent to commit fraud. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.